Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Marky B's Gaming C and we are a couple of weeks now away from the end of the year, completing 2015, um, the year I started doing this YouTube channel. I've had a, I've had a great blast setting it all up and, and thanks to all the guys that have been checking out my content. We're going to kick it off with the biggest cock-ups of 2015. This is again just the kind of things that I've noticed that has gone on during this year, which I haven't particularly been uh, impressed with, uh, that may have just been stupid company decisions making, just bad business practices, etc, etc. So, uh, quite a bit, bit of uh, content to cover. A lot of shit has happened this year, that's why. Now, um, we're going to start off with Batman Arkham Knight. Now, if you owned uh, a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox One, you could very happily go in on release date, uh, 20, 29th of June, I believe that was released in the UK. You could go in, pick yourself up a copy, slap that disc into your console and play the game. If you are unfortunate enough to uh, be more of a, a PC gamer and you were looking forward to playing that in all its 4K glory, then you definitely would have been extremely disappointed because they fucked that port up royally. Now, usually games get released with little bugs and things which they can patch out in the first week or two. Not the case. Warner Brothers really, really stuffed up with this one. Um, the game was unplayable. It, it had, like people were saying, it had next to no frame rates for 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 a big for whole chunks of the game. Um, it's crashing all the time. It, it just like it was just awful. It was such a bad release for the game. It got absolutely slammed, and it even forced Warner Brothers to have to pull it from the steam store so if you had if you um if you had have bought the copy of it then you you are unfortunate really that that they were they couldn't do anything with it they they pulled it and you didn't see anything car till october time i think it was october when it went back onto the store by that time um the damage was already done People had taken to the internet to, to vent their anger, and um, yeah, I do, I just don't. I, I I still kind of try and go into forums to see how that game's doing on the PC, and people are still slagging it off. People are still saying that it's got bugs to it. People are still saying that it's a bit of a mess. So um, yeah, like Warner Brothers dropped the ball massively with that one. Um, I was fortunate enough to pick it up for. PlayStation 4, so I had no problems, and it is a really, really cool game. It was just so unfortunate that such a huge AAA hyped up game, people were waiting years for this, and it had to be released in that state. Uh, I, I don't know whether it was ported by a third party company, whether they let someone else do that, but whoever ported that game, you f you're fucked up, man. You're fucked up. <laughs> So next, um, I'm going to be talking about exclusivity. Oh, it's a word that fanboys love to chuck around, you know, to make them feel bigger, to make them feel more, um, I don't know, more better with themselves, I guess, that they, they have exclusive titles to one console or another. Uh, I'm talking mainly about third party console exclusives and not really even third parties that work with a particular company the two examples which you know i'm going to bring up 2015 we had street fighter 5 done by capcom which was sony bought them to have exclusive rights to that game and you've got rise of the tomb raider square enix Again, these are two titles which don't work in-house with, with either or company. I mean, they develop games for multi-platform consoles and, and PC. So, really, really, you know, I, I hate it when this kind of shit happens. Like, it's just lazy of the company, you know, when they just throw money and say, oh yeah, can we just give you loads of money and then you let us have that? Just so we can try and, like, fuel the fanboys. Fuel them! And... <laughs> And um, I just, I think Street Fighter V fucked up 
because for people who love fighting games, that sucks because this is a proper next-gen fighting game. Um, it didn't affect me too much. Rise of the Tomb Raider, you really fucked up. I mean, Square Enix, like, you fucking dumbasses. Like, seriously, I hope Microsoft paid you so much money because... Like, I don't, I don't think even the marketing was done that well for that game. So you went exclusive for one whole year with Microsoft. You decided to release it on the exact same day as Fallout 4. You decided to release it within the same window that other games such as Star Wars Battlefront, Call of Duty, Black Ops was coming out. And, it, like, I don't know what you were expecting. PlayStation 4 was your biggest in-store base for that game. That's where your game would have sold best on. And you decide to give a middle finger to all of those fans, all of those customers that supported you with the first game. You decided to shove them. But don't worry, you get to play it a year later. You get to play it a year later. Nah, fuck that. I'm not picking up that game. I'm not supporting these kind of practices. I'm not I'm not going to let Square Enix take a huge cash grab because they're greedy and then try and convince everyone on another platform that it's okay we'll we'll be with you now next year. I don't think that game's going to sell that well next year. It's going to come out November again, so there's going to be huge exclusive titles. No doubt Sony are going to be pushing all of their console exclusive, their AAA in-house titles because they've had a bit of a lackluster lineup this year. I mean the like Rise of the Tomb Raider was that was that was a dirty one because they it's only the second in the franchise so it's only their second game that they're making of the rebooted series so the first one they they released on all platforms and even when they released it on all platforms they said it didn't sell as well as they thought it would so god knows what they were thinking just focusing on Xbox 1 I mean, what's that, a 15 million install base? So if they sold to every single owner of an Xbox One, they would have sold 15 million copies. <laughs> nah, that was never going to happen, and it hasn't happened. Um, the game got completely tucked away. Uh, some gaming sites, IGN to be noted, really tried to um, defend it. They really tried to make people aware, like, don't forget about this game, but it was already forgotten about. So, yeah, great, great one on that, Bloody bunch of dickheads. <laughs> um, what else is... I mean, I guess this has been ongoing for the last few years, but especially 2015. Oh, DLC, man. DLC, season passes, microtransactions. We just, we just had another slew of it throughout the year. You know, companies just trying to, to milk... The games for all they've got disgustingly more recently in uh, Battlefront. EA have, have stripped that game down to its bones. There's barely any meat on it. And um, you know that you know that EA have sent all of their developers bar a couple to now work on the new Battlefield game. Hmm. Funny that. Sounds like they've left a few developers behind to make sure that the patches are kept up to date, to make sure the servers are running smoothly, and then just to release that content that's already been created on a quarterly basis. That's low, EA. That's extremely low. But what was even better, just a couple of days ago, Activision had announced that they will be incorporating microtransactions back into Call of Duty Black Ops 3. So you've now got a game which you can pay £49 for. If you want the season pass, you can pay another £40 for, for more content, more levels. And But that's not enough, is it? If you want to buy perks, if you want to buy weapon upgrades with in-game currency, so you pay real cash, you can now also do that. That is fucking disgusting. That is absolutely atrocious that, that Activision have, have just rolled that all out. Like, this is a huge industry. These business practices do not need to be in there. They do not need to be in there. Um, I keep saying to people, try not to buy season passes. Try not to buy DLC. The only way that it's going to get better 
is by people not so much taking a stand because me taking a stand against not buying a battlefront piece of dlc that's not going to affect ea one little bit but it's going to affect me because i get an extra 40 quid to buy a new game with so that's what i would encourage people to do you know save your money use it for other content buy some indie games on the psn store i can guarantee you'd have so much more fun spending 40 quids worth of indie games than you would buying another 16 maps for for battlefront i can guarantee you that i can guarantee you that <laughs> ah which brings me on to the final the biggest cock up of 2015 the one that is going to go down in the history books it's gonna never be forgotten you're you're now never gonna be able to say the name konami without the words fuck you and it's it's the, the the kojima konami debacle that's happened it happened so quick as well like kojima went from being a really good developer for konami working for them to like all of a sudden oh by the way this is gonna be his last game oh by the way <laughs> like we've cancelled silent hills oh by the way you can't speak to kojima here we we fucking taped his mouth shut and we've hidden him away somewhere where no one can get to him oh man what an absolute fuck up seriously oh, i'm gonna laugh at this in years to come like and whoever whoever is working for konami at the moment is like I feel for you guys. I do. I honestly feel for you guys because we've, over the last year, we've um, been given a taste of what it's like to work for a company like that. Um, we've heard some horse whispering. We've um, we've heard rumours, and you can only take it all as as it comes. But yeah, let's let's get down to the finer details. So so Kojima. Uh, announced that Metal Gear Solid 5 was going to be his last game. I think it was round about the start of this year. It was after PT had been... Um, after PT, of course it was. PT had been released for bloody years since then. But it was... Um, it was after PT had, had built some real hype. It was after people who were going crazy. They finally realised that it was for a brand new Silent Hills game. Norman Reedus and um, Guillermo del Toro were getting involved. Everyone was excited. Everyone was cool with Konami. No problems. And then all of a sudden, within a matter of weeks, Kojima was working on Metal Gear Solid 5 as his last game. They were removing his name from um, a lot of websites and a lot of um, Konami content. Silent Hills was cancelled. So they said, sorry guys, not going to be doing that anymore. They tried to remove PT from the PSN store. I say tried because they did remove it, but like me, if you've always kept it on your console, you can have it forever, and that's where it's going to stay for me. I think that in itself is a little nugget of gaming history. For for the right or wrong reasons, we'll, we'll have to be a wait to be seen. And And then we just didn't hear from Kojima from about July onwards he just went in in a hiatus no one could could contact him we couldn't get any information around what he was doing um Konami said that he was busy finishing the game with his team oh, he had a leaving party he genuinely had a leaving party which was followed up um, with the release of Metal Gear Solid 5. I don't know whether Konami saw the sales for that game and thought, oh, you know what, maybe we've made a mistake because Konami then came out after that release and said, we never said Kojima was leaving. We don't know what you're talking about. What is this? What is this leaving party? We, we, never, we never hosted a leaving party for him. So I don't know what this is. Maybe that's just him having friendly drinks, but it looks like a leaving party to me. Um, he says that he's still with the company and that he's just on vacation. A spokesperson genuinely came out and said, we never said Hideo Kojima has left the company. He's currently taking a break from gaming and will be back shortly. Be back in their company or not, they probably knew the answer to it. Their damage control was absolutely awful. I mean, if they thought people were just going to lap all this stuff up and think that he wasn't really going to do much. Fucking idiots. Absolute fucking idiots. And 
to is that for the for the last nail in the coffin for Konami, they decided to ban Kojima from attending um, the uh, video game awards, which was on just last week, and he couldn't even go up and collect an award for a game which he had created with his team. He won Best Action Adventure, Metal Gear Solid Five, absolutely outstanding game. It was my number one game of the year. If you watched my previous video. Um, that was it. I think after that, Konami were done. The day his contract broke, Sony came out and announced that he was collaborating with them. Sony came in, out and announced that this is their new studio. We're, we're about to do an interview with him. And yeah, he's going to be making new IPs. He's brought over um, definitely two of his, his leads. Of a, um, like a, an art director and some other some other cinematics art guy, so th who worked with him on Metal Gear Solid Five. We know that for sure that he's brought them two over. There is also rumors going round that a lot of the staff from the Konami team have moved over to join Kojima with his new with his new. It's his development studio, which is brilliant, and um. I just think it's br like the drama of it all. Like, who would have thought you could get so much drama in a gaming industry? But I mean, like, I I'm really looking forward. To, um, Kojima's been really humble about the whole thing. He's been very professional. He's not he's not saying anything about Konami. He's not saying anything about what happened or why he decided to let leave or why they told him to leave. Whether we'll find out maybe a couple of years down the line. We'll have to wait and see, but at the moment he's been very professional and he's just come out and said that he wants to focus on making games for the fans. That is a true developer for you right there. You're not going to see any microtransactions in his kind of stuff. I'm calling it right now, and if he does, then I will I'll try and eat this hat. I I'll try. But um he he's he's a games developer for the gamers and they're they're few and far between. Um, the only other ones I can think of at the top of my head is Neil Druckmann uh, from Naughty Dog. Um, that's that's it at the moment. I can't I can't think of anyone else who who's really uh, puts the kind of passion and effort into the games and shows that they're there for the gamers. The, so that that was it. That that was the biggest cock up of 2015, and I'm sure if you're watching this video, you will probably agree. Um, I'd still love to hear uh, other bits like what's what's pissed you off this year about the gaming industry, trolls, fanboys, fanboys fucking suck, man. Fanboys suck so bad. I I like just it's getting worse on gaming forums and um, gaming journalist sites and stuff. But yeah, let me know. Let me know what what you've particularly hated uh, about the gaming in industry this year. Please remember to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It's the end of the year. It'd be a nice little Christmas present to me. Thank you very much. And I'll catch you Christmas Day, guys. Come back Christmas Day for a special message from me to you guys.